I was thinking about what I wanted to speak on and what's really been on my heart lately is just this desire to grow in my faith and in my knowledge about God. And I mean, I was raised in the church. I don't really know a world without Jesus in it. And I basically called myself a Christian my entire life. But it wasn't until I came to Jessup that I began to realize how there is so much about God that I had never even thought of before. And I don't know what your experience has been, um, but taking all of these Bible classes has really opened my eyes to just how immense and mighty God really is. Especially with these classes that I'm taking this semester. I mean, I'm a senior. I don't know about any of you seniors in the house, but I'm taking Christian Perspective, Christian Theo, Leadership and Justice with D. Glock and PC. It's really good. Um, And I'm just beginning to realize, like, oh, man, I am about to be launched into the real world. I'm going to graduate, and I'm going to be in the real world as a Christian, and the real world is scary, especially right now. It's scary, and it's messy, and I don't really want to go. Does anyone else feel like that sometimes? I don't really want to go. I want to stay in this just a bubble. But sometimes I do want to get out. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, with all of the crazy things that have been happening in our world lately, I keep thinking, like I try to ground myself in, okay, I know who I am, I know who my identity is in, and, you know, God, I think I've got a pretty firm grasp on what you want me to do and who you are, Um, but I'm still confused and I'm disheartened and I'm discouraged by everything that's going on around me. And then when I think, what I think that I know about God and his plan and who I am and what I'm doing, it all begins to be blurry And it feels overwhelming, and all of a sudden, I'm lost, and I'm confused, and I'm doubtful. And it's like, how did I get there? So that is why tonight, I want to talk about being anchored in our knowledge of God and remembering who he is to us. And one of our theme verses, James 1, 5 through 6, says that if any of you lacks wisdom... Let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. Now, I want to focus on the part that says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. Because ultimately, he is going to be the one to give you the correct answer. And... James, you know, even talks about this further in chapter 3 about the difference between divine wisdom and man's wisdom. And we are not going to find that kind of wisdom anywhere else but through him, through God. So if you're looking for that kind of wisdom or direction in your peers or maybe your favorite podcast host or the news or social media, odds are that you probably are not going to find godly wisdom through there. And that's not to say that God doesn't speak through people or other things, but the human perspective is tainted. And so my point is that God's perspective on this world is so much different than ours. And so that is why it is important to know his heart and know who he is. Thank you for the snaps. Um, So, you know, how are we supposed to do that? Where do we even start? And, you know, I want to also mention that I don't have all the answers. I don't, I don't have the answer key. And finding out about how to know God's heart and know him is a long process. But I do want to share two ways that I have found that we can know God and know who he's all about. So the first way is through experience. It is by knowing God through our personal relationship with him. And I don't know how you view your relationship with God. Maybe he's a close friend, maybe he's a father, or maybe he's even a distant cousin. Um, But personally, I see God as my father. I run to him the same way that I ran to my dad when I was a kid and I would skin my knee. Um, I go to God for answers and for comfort and for direction. And, you know, I would even go to God when I'm lonely and I need someone to laugh at my jokes Um, And obviously, I don't even know if he's really laughing, but I do think God has a sense of humor, and, you know, I'm pretty funny, so you're all supposed to laugh at that. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Okay, anyways, Uh, (laughs) but I know that God is a God of love and faithfulness because of the way that I have seen him work and move in my own life. 
So in summer 2018, I worked at a summer camp. It was a Christian camp called Calvin Crest Conferences. And thanks, yeah. I worked there um, that summer in a kitchen. And let me tell you, food service, not for me. I don't know. If you work in food service, props to you because people are demanding when they're hungry. And I just, it's not for me. Um, and neither was the staff that I worked under or the stressful work environment that I was in. And that job experience was just very hard for a lot of reasons. And um, needless to say, I did not want to go back. So when summer 2019 comes around, I'm praying about, you know, what my plans are going to be. And I remember specifically praying, God, my hands are open for what you have for me this summer but I just do not want to go back to Calvin Crest. Now, never put but in a prayer because God will really just laugh in your face. So, I mean, who can guess what I did that summer? I'll give you a piece of candy. Just, it's a, yeah, it's a given. It's a given. Yes, I went to Calvin Crest. Um, I went back and where I specifically asked not to go, God told me to go. So, isn't, see, isn't that funny how God works? I told you he had a sense of humor. Um, so, yes, I went back to this camp, and I actually worked in a new position as a program lead. So I wasn't in the kitchen. And in this role, I worked directly with campers, and I got to take them on hikes, and I got to talk to them about Jesus, and I built fires and cooked over them. It was honestly, one of the most special experiences and summers that I had ever had. And I just felt like I'd seen a piece of God's kingdom that summer and that God knew all along that he wanted to use me there. Like it was a completely different experience than before. And I originally said no. <laughs> I said no. But because God has a greater perspective, he knows us better than we know ourselves. He knew that he wanted me there, and I thought that what was better for me was to not go. Um, and from that summer, I grew in my confidence in God's love and his faithfulness in my life and his plan for me. So that's the first way that we can know God is through experience. And the second way that we can know God is through his word. So in Romans, Paul talks about how Abraham was justified by faith. Now, just to give you a quick backstory, um, Abraham, you know, Father Abraham, who knows the song like, Father Abraham, that's the guy. Um, so Father Abraham, he was about 100 years old when he was told that he was going to be the father of many nations. And not to mention, his wife Sarah was barren. So in verse 18, it reads, in hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Abraham was fully convinced that God was going to do what he had said he was going to do. And what shocks me is that Abraham doesn't even flinch at God's plan. He's like, okay, your will be done. Like he's 100 years old. And Abraham had faith even when it didn't make sense because he knew God's character and he fully trusted that God would use him to fulfill his plan. So even in our own lives, we can learn from the story and we can know that God makes things happen that we can't even see or understand because he has a different perspective than us. To us humans, a 100-year-old man, like even in today, like not even in Bible times, but today, a 100-year-old man having children with his barren wife doesn't make sense to us. But it makes sense to God because he has already seen everything to completion this was his plan. So I think it is pretty safe to say that we serve a highly complex and powerful God who works and moves in ways that we can't even see or comprehend. And what he is doing right now in this world and in your life may not even be revealed to you yet. And, you know, yes, this life, it's scary and it's messy and discerning what is right and wrong 
can be very complicated right now. But let us not doubt in the one who created you and I to be confident sons and daughters of God. I just lost my spot. Let's trust in our knowledge of God's character like Abraham. And let's be fully convinced that God is going to do what he has promised. Okay, so quiz time. Hope you're all paying attention. What are the two ways, this is for candy, what are the two ways that we can know God that I've talked about? Through experience, that's the first one. Okay. Um, I thought it was with my right hand. I'm a lefty. I'm just feeling generous, so there you go. You guys look like you're falling asleep over there, so I'll just give you some candy. <laughs> oh, watch your head. <laughs> um, but yes, okay, wait, so I heard the first one, experience and the Bible, the Word of God, yes, great job. Um, so yeah, we can know God through our personal relationship with him and by faithfully studying his word. So now that we have that down, what, what are we supposed to do now? How do we try to see the world through God's perspective if things on this earth don't make sense? And, you know, it is so easy to become distracted and confused about what we know about our faith in God when we are living in this world. And the news and the media and the people around us can be so convincing and can instill doubt and worry within us. But Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. I'm going to read that one again. But Romans 1, 12, 1 through 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Bless you. I heard someone sneeze. If we are rooted in what we know about God and his promises, we will be able to discern what is good and acceptable and perfect here on earth. And this can only be done through the constant pursuit of following Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And when we do this, Paul says that our minds will be transformed, and in turn, so will our lives. And we, others will be able to see that evident transformation by the way that we act and speak and listen and love others around us. So wherever you are in your faith right now, I challenge you to ask yourself these questions. Just reflect on, you know, who is God in my life, and what what do I know about him already? And what do I want to know about him? And how do I get there? Well, I'll tell you how you can get there. I'll give you a little hint. It's by pursuing a relationship with him and putting your faith in his word. Because the more that we get to know God, the stronger our faith becomes. And when this happens, we are able to better discern the will of God and see the world through his eyes rather than our own. So let's pray together. God, you are our father, and you are our friend and our steady rock, and you are overseeing everything around us and above us that is going on that we can't explain or control. And we thank you for being the constant in our lives that we can be anchored in. And God, we ask you to provide your wisdom to us as we live in a world and in a time where we don't always know how to respond or think or what to do. So God, we ask you to guide us and to help us discern what is good and acceptable and perfect in your eyes. And we ask you to reveal more of yourself to us so that we can be confident in what we know about you and so that way we can be more like you. We love you so, so much, Jesus. And it's all in your name that we pray. Amen.